energy-efficient building design using technology to reduce carbon footprint. According to estimates provided by the United Nations Environment Program and the International Energy Agency, the built environment is responsible for approximately 40% of all carbon emissions that are caused by energy use. As a result, the construction industry in the UK is a sector that generates a lot of carbon dioxide emissions. The status of being carbon intensive is a precarious one. High carbon businesses will most certainly be subject to stringent rules as a result of increased pressure from the British government and international accords for a net zero 2050. These pressures are going to be front loaded over the next 10 years because the United Kingdom has set a goal of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 68% by the year 2030. Consumers are showing a growing interest in products with low carbon emissions. Low carbon credentials will likely become a selling feature in the future as a result of rising environmental awareness and the provision of financial incentives for the adoption of clean energy. In addition, buyers of residential real estate are becoming more cautious of the use of offsetting methods as a strategy for reducing carbon emissions. Some people view this as buying out of their responsibility to address climate change. Therefore, giving techniques of long-term sustainability some thought during the design phase of your next building will likely result in that structure being a more appealing property investment. In a nutshell, if you want your next building design to be a success over the long term, you will need to incorporate the structure's carbon footprint into your planning. The construction sector is getting ready for a future with lower carbon emissions. Sustainability is becoming an increasingly important consideration in the architectural field. 2019 marked the year that the Royal Institute of British Architects (REBA) issued a climate emergency declaration and reaffirmed their support for the Net Zero 2050 initiative. Since then, the Royal Institute of British Architects (REBA) has initiated the 2030 Climate Challenge to persuade forward-thinking architectural practices, particularly REBA-accredited practices, to incorporate environmental sustainability into their designs. The challenge outlines several objectives to be achieved to bring the sector's carbon footprint down to the levels required by the UK government's goals for 2030 and 2050. You can get in touch with the REBA to obtain an evaluation of the performance of your practices towards sustainability here. This video will provide an overview of some low-carbon design concepts that you can incorporate into your next project. It will include both the carbon that is embodied and that which is operational. The former refers to the carbon that is released into the atmosphere throughout the manufacturing, transportation, and assembly processes of a building. The latter refers to the carbon that is released into the atmosphere when the structure is occupied. Reducing one's carbon footprint through location and transportation choices. When designing a building, an architect will, without a doubt, have the experience of the building's ultimate occupants in mind. Nevertheless, it is necessary to give some thought to how the layout of your new construction may make their way of life more environmentally friendly. Carbon emissions caused by building operations account for 28% of the world's total carbon emissions related to energy. This typically refers to aspects such as its thermal efficiency or the kind of energy source that it uses. However, the simplicity of sustainable lifestyles, such as access to public transit, is an issue that is given less consideration than it should be. An illustration of this may be found in Bryn Davidson's TEDx talk from 2014 in which he is an authorized lead architect. He discusses a ground, breaking environmentally friendly home that features a timber frame, solar panels, and high levels of insulation. On the other hand, it features a sizable parking lot. This is because the eco, home can only be reached by automobile. Even though the most advanced technology has been implemented and a lot of money has been invested to create a sustainable design, the inhabitants will still have a larger carbon footprint because of their transportation requirements. The architect thought about creative ideas but did not take into account the fundamental ways of life of the people who would live there. The most recent version of the Bream criteria for ecologically responsible design places a significant emphasis on the accessibility of transportation options. It states that convenient access should be provided to more environmentally friendly forms of public transportation which will result in a reduction in CO2 emissions over the building's lifetime. Reduction of one's carbon footprint. Effective utilization of heat. The heating sector is responsible for around 30% of the total greenhouse gas emissions in the UK. 
As a result, the United Kingdom government considers cutting down on wasted energy in private residences to be one of the primary measures for bringing down the country's overall emissions of greenhouse gases. In addition, as of the year 2021, 77% of households' central heating systems are still powered by carbon-intensive gas. If the production of carbon is a side effect of heating a home, then one apparent step toward lowering a home's overall carbon footprint would be to reduce the amount of heating that is required. That is the purpose of the many approaches for improving thermal efficiency. The domestic energy efficiency industry is also the largest subsector of the low, carbon and renewables economy, which makes solutions more easily available and more inexpensive. Passive House is the name of the standard, Passive House is an air tightness and thermal efficiency criteria that is held to a very high level. They require a very low amount of energy for both heating and cooling, which results in a greatly decreased operational carbon footprint and lower energy expenditures for the people living in the building. The Passive House standard refers to a building that obtains the majority of its heating from sources that are not mechanical, such as the sun or the people who live there. You can take into account this level of airtight heat efficiency in your subsequent design by utilizing the tool that is included in the Passive House planning package. In 2019, the Northeast was home to the region's very first Passive House, which was located in Tyneside and overlooked the River Derwent. Tracing Green 2019 The sustainable architecture firm Moss & Kerr built the home upside down, with the bedrooms located on the lower level so that it could make use of the expansive views of the river. However, the airtight construction of the house means that the carbon footprint created by heating and cooling the house is virtually non-existent. This is the feature that is the most crucial. Insulation with a low carbon footprint Insulation is an essential component of the passive house approach, in addition to being an important step in many other strategies for lowering the operating carbon emissions of a design. Insulation is recognized in the United Kingdom's sixth carbon budget as one of the most important factors in reaching a net zero construction industry by the year 2050. Insulation and airtight construction are two ways in which your building's operational carbon footprint can be greatly reduced. What would happen, though, if you were able to lower the amount of carbon that was embodied in the insulation material that you chose? This is a field that sees a substantial quantity of new developments regularly. Thermal and aerogel insulation, on the other hand, is an interesting new product that is currently in development. When compared to materials that are more commonly used, an aerogel layer that is 10 mm thick can cut the amount of heat that is required for heating by as much as 25%. Because it may be produced from several types of industrial waste, the embodied carbon of this material is quite low. The use of heat pumps. Heat pumps are a different and more easily accessible approach for increasing thermal efficiency. They were called a key option for supply-side decarbonization in the fourth UK carbon budget that was published in 2010 by the CCC. A heat pump moves heat from one location to another by drawing it from one location to another. Take, for instance, the warmth that is transferred from the soil in the garden to the radiators in your home. They make use of a small amount of electricity to transmit heat from a space that is naturally cooler to one that is naturally warmer, which is the opposite of how heat naturally moves. In a nutshell, it can be thought of as a backward refrigerator. Installing a heat pump instead of a gas boiler can save you the equivalent of 30 round trip flights to and from Madrid over 10 years, even though the heat pump only uses a tiny amount of energy. In addition, starting in 2025, the government of the United Kingdom will prohibit the installation of new gas boilers. Finding solutions with a lower carbon footprint has been a top concern for architects as a result. So this is the end of our today's video. Do you like it? Share your precious thoughts with us in comments section below and subscribe to our YouTube channel.